Hey guys and gals, Nary here from Drake Wing Gaming. Something me on Twitter, the Gaming Drag. Today I'm coming back at you another Let's Play episode of Tennis Ace Case Case Path. So y'all, let's go ahead and jump right back in, shall we? Alarm, Shan, you are up, and let's go. All right, <clears throat> there we go. Right away, I notice a car parked right by the entrance. That's weird. Do we have guests or something? Why are you asking me? If you don't know it, then why should I? How should I? I wasn't literally asking you, just talking out loud. Probably shouldn't do that. People will start thinking you're crazy. You're the only one here. And I'm still people, and, and I'm still people, so be careful I don't start thinking you're crazy. I roll my eyes, grabbing my keys and going for the door. You wanna come inside real quick? Get some water or something? Sure, I have to admit I'm also curious to see who's the mystery visitor. It's probably just someone from my mom's work. At 11 p.m.? I very much doubt it. I would believe anything her work asks her to do at this point. I wait for Shuichi to get in first and then make sure to close the lock to lock the door behind me. I put the keys in the little key holder we have by the front door where I immediately notice my mother's keys are still absent from it. Only Aki's are here at the moment. That's weird. While I'm busy examining and storing my keys, Shuichi finishes taking off his shoes and heads into the living room. I hurry to take my to take mine own off and follow suit. Oh my god. First thing I see is a very tall wolf sitting on our sofa with a teeny tiny cup of tea in his hand. His body turned towards the door to see who was coming in. <clears throat> Shuichi stands frozen by the doorway, staring at the scene. Alongside Alex, I see Keisuke staring at the two of us with a weird look on his face. Is something the matter? He sputters those words out very uncertain. It takes me a few seconds to compute that he's probably a little rattled by the looks on our faces. Arushihara, what are you doing here? I could be asking you the same thing. Isn't it a little late to be showing up to someone's house? Like you're one to talk? That's not what I meant. So you're out with Shuichi, Ni. You could have at least said something. We were worried. Worried, huh? Why would you be worried? And not to mean any offense, but what are you two doing here? I make a gesture towards the two unannounced guests with my chin. <laughs> I felt bad about not having time to talk to you earlier so today, so I came here as soon as I was free. I even brought my notes and textbooks. I look at the seat right next to him, and immediately my eyes are drawn to his school bag. But even with, the, but even with that explanation, the whole thing just sounds too absurd to my mind. You came over at 11 p.m. to study? What? No, of course not. That'd be stupid. I came over at 9 p.m. Then Aki-kun said you weren't home and asked if I wanted to wait until you arrived. Okay, I think it's safe to say I've mentally checked out at this point. I just... I, I can't. You do know that's just as weird, right? Like, it's not possible that you can't see how friggin' weird that is. I just thought I could help a little. I mean, what about Irata? He's also here late at night. Don't include me in this. I just came to walk him home after he spent the day at my place. Still, you didn't tell me you had asked Arushihara to study with you first. Why would you even do that? You guys are in different years and all. You don't study the same material. Well, Keisuke-san Keisuke was the whole reason he was even studying in the first place. Huh? Is that so? Aki, for once in your life, are you incapable of keeping your mouth shut? What did I do? It's the truth. Some things are better left unsaid, especially when they are embarrassing. I, I made you want to study. I, I think I'm lost. It's not a big deal, I Oh, he said he's spending so much more time with you lately, he's starting to feel inspired by how responsible and diligent you are. Oh, that's... Oh, I'm flattered. Okay, this time you absolutely did it on purpose, you little dick. <laughs> this, uh, this is a lot of stuff to absorb all at once. Now that's just wonderful. Aki managed to find a way to break two people's brains all at once. Seriously, this isn't a big deal. Don't overthink it. It's still kind of nice to hear. I'm glad our time together has been having such a positive impact. I wasn't even aware you guys were spending so much time together. Seriously, it's not a big deal. Why is everyone making such a big deal out of it? Well, I guess we have been spending a lot more time together now that I think about it. I'm definitely not complaining about it, though. I see. I guess I'm a bit out of the loop since I've been too busy to hang out lately. Why does the mood feel so awkward all of a sudden? Sheesh, why is everyone so quiet? This isn't a funeral. You really need to learn to be quiet sometimes. You're one to say that. Hang on. As confused as I already am, I still feel like I need to recognize the huge elephant in the room, or in this case, it'd be a wolf, I guess? Suichi's eyes fall into Alex's figure, and he makes a pointing gesture to the wolf. I guess I get why Arushihara is here, but seriously, who is this guy? Oh, right. I guess I forgot to explain. That's a bit of a long story, but... I'm his bodyguard. That's not how I would have put it, but I suppose it's true. No, that's exactly the way to put it. You were just going to blabber a lot and try to dodge the question. Right. I think I remember Saya-chan mentioning something about a bodyguard. 
Although she did describe him being tall like a mountain, so I was expecting a little more. Well, just more. That's easy to say when you're also ridiculously tall. I suppose that's a good point. My apologies, I should have introduced myself first since I'm the only stranger in the room. Nah, that's quite alright. This whole situation was already pretty confusing, so I don't blame you for feeling awkward. Alex frowns, staring at Yuichi with a slightly confused look on his face. Of course, Yuichi probably wouldn't be able to notice it, but I've kind of gotten used to reading the nuances in Alex's, Alex's expressions, even if just a little. Like how when he's frowning, that means he's mad, but when he's frowning, that means he's amused, and when he's frowning, he's also thinking about something. Honestly, the real takeaway here is that he frowns a lot. Alex, Alex can come off as really intimidating at first, but he's a good guy. I just feel like I have to put this out there for clarity's sake, but Alex is just a nickname. My name is Alexander. Uh, nice to meet you, Alexander. I guess you really are as much of a foreigner as you look. Alex blinks a few times, cocking his head slightly to the side. I look foreign? I thought I blended in well with the locals. Well, you don't really have any noticeable accent, but you are way taller than a, than a Japanese, than a Japanese, and you don't usually see wolves with your fur pattern over here. Also, the fact that you walk around with an uncovered tattoo is also a bit of a dead giveaway. It is. No one ever said anything about it, at least other, other than the time I was bored, barred from entering a bathhouse because of it. Tattoos are kind of a Yakuza thing in Japan, so people don't look at them with very good eyes. I'm surprised you didn't already know that. Oh. He muses over it for a few seconds, echoing a low-pitched humming sound from his throat for a second. Maybe I should cover it up? Your tattoo is fine. More than fine, even. It helps you do your job. People avoid you in the street because of it. Well... It's not like the super jack, tall as sin, always frowning wolf needs any help to look threatening. He already has that covered with or without the tattoo. Anyway, I really should leave. Dad will wonder why I've been gone for so long. And, um, nice running into you, Rushihara. Nice running into me? That's... Are you okay? You usually don't say nice things like that. I'm just fine. Don't worry about it. I'll hopefully see you guys tomorrow. Might not have time to stop and say hi, though. Have a good night, Shuichini. Thanks for looking after my brother. Looking after? What the hell do you think we were doing together? You're being a bother, of course. You little... <laughs> have a good night, too, Akikun. I'll talk to you later. Shuichi out. Shuichi out. Shuichi's out towards the entrance, and before I know it, I hear the key turning and the door being opened and closed behind him. He wasted no time at all leaving. Actually, he didn't even say bye to me. We should actually be on our way, too. Already? Yes, well, ideally, I'd have liked to spend more time together, but I can't get home too late, and, I'd sp and I did spend two hours waiting for you to arrive. I just wanted to make sure you were all right. To be perfectly honest, I was about to call a few of our family's workers to form a search party. I was out for two hours. You're being ridiculous. I guess. I just didn't know you had a habit of staying out so late. He doesn't, actually. I was pretty surprised, too. Usually he at least calls beforehand or answers his phone. Wait, answer my phone? Right. I tried calling you before before coming over, but there was no answer. I tried some more along with Akikun after I arrived, and while we were waiting, but all calls went straight to voicemail. I... I reached for my phone in my pocket, pressing the power button to light up the screen. Right. Uh, Shuichi made me turn it off while we were studying so I wouldn't get distracted. I'm not used to turning it off, so I forgot it completely. Oh, I suppose that makes sense. I should have thought of that. Yeah, Shuichi is a special kind of annoying when it comes to studying. Full of all these little rules and regulations. Turning your phone off when you study is super basic. What are you talking about? Shh, nobody asked you, Wonder Boy. Wonder Boy, do I even have to ask? It's because you always think you're so wonderful. So that's a no. Anyway, I should really be on my way. I'll talk to you later, Yuichi. Right, sorry you came all this way for nothing. Nah, nothing to be sorry for. I got to see you if it, I got to see you so it wasn't a wasted trip. Keisuke gives me a quick gentle squeeze on the shoulder as he passes me by on the way to the door, immediately making my ears twitch and my face grow hot. Right. The door's already open, so we'll just see ourselves out. Have a good night. Thank you. Thank you for kindly receiving us. Alex bows to the two of us. Sure. Good night, guys. I quickly follow behind the two, locking the door after saying our farewells. When I get back to the living room, I see Aki has hopped on onto the bigger couch. Has hopped to the bigger couch, flipping the pages of some book I don't recognize. You know, I get that you like to tease me, but we really need to have boundaries about the things you tell others. What do you mean? I mean, that you didn't have to tell anyone that I was feeling inspired by Kaykun. Why are you doing air quotes with your fingers? You literally said you were trying to be more like him. They didn't have to know that. This kind of friendship where you hide everything from everyone really doesn't make any sense to me. So what if they know that? It's not a big deal. You're saying that now, but the only reason you told them was because you knew it'd be it'd embarrass me. Just because I knew you'd make a big deal out of it doesn't mean I agree that it is a big deal. He goes back to flipping the pages of his book, not even looking at me anymore. Oh, excuse me. You need to be a little more honest with your friends. You bottle things up too much. 
I'm not taking relationship advice from a 12-year-old. Fine, feel free to keep floundering about and feeling awkward about everything. Floundering? Where did you even learn that word? It's a bit too advanced for someone your age. I like to read. What are you reading, anyway? I circle around the couch, sitting down next to Aki and peering at his book. He closes it, giving me a glimpse of the cover. It's a simplified version of Macbeth. My world literature teacher assigned this to us. Shakespeare? That definitely is way too advanced for your grade. It's fine. This one is actually really dumbed down, and I have a hard time enjoying it because of all the characters act like I'm what a man in his 40s thinks modern kids talk like. Yikes, that doesn't sound good. Yeah, reading a character talk in mo reading a character talk in modern slang inside a period novel really isn't fun. Kinda kills the immersion, really. Sorry, you have to go through that, then. Eh, I'll be fine. I'm almost done with it. At least writing the report on the book will be really easy. The book reports are the most tedious things to work to work on, though. I can think of worse stuff. I can just regurgitate what I remember of it on the paper, and I'll be sure to do well. That's a somewhat gross way of putting, but I guess it works. Just make sure you don't stay up too late. I'm heading to bed. Don't worry. I'll just finish this chapter, and I'll go to sleep. Have a good night. You too. Immediately as I get to my bedroom, I shut the door behind me, turn off the lights, and plop myself down on my bed. I feel so mentally exhausted after hours of Shuichi drilling philosophy and the likes into my head that I barely have the energy to take off my clothes before I sleep. A couple of seconds later, and without getting, without getting up from the bed, I dress myself down to my underwear and go under the covers. Ah, my head hurts. I'm pretty sure I just might dream of Plato tonight. And that is so clearly not a good thing. June 5th. It's June, but not June's run. Hmm. Murmurs echo all throughout our classroom. Today is one of the most feared days of the year. Midterms. A hellish week filled with nothing but the most difficult challenges, breaking the spirits of students all over all around campus, leaving them nothing more than empty husks deprived of their will to live. A week where teachers delight in watching their students' faces contorting with fear, despair, and sorrow. When all those who failed to appropriately prepare themselves were handed a cruel dose of reality, staring at questions I'd have no hope of answering. All those around me are now waiting with full or were now waiting with full dread for the ringing of the bell which announces the end of the road. Just watching their hopes and dreams being crushed as the clock ticks ever closer to the beginning of their worst nightmares makes my heart weep in pity and anguish. Abandon all hope, those who walk into these classrooms. Did you see the latest episode of X Cross Ninja Stars? Yeah, it was pretty great. I wonder what Sagami is going to I wonder how Sagami is going to squirm his way out of that situation. Right? It's already been made really clear he's not strong enough to defeat the Demon Lord. Do you think he's going to die? What? No way! Tomataka sensei would never kill him. Sagami's the show's most popular character. Ah, the true ah, truly the very faces of hopelessness and despair. Hmm, I don't know. What do you think, Yuichi san? Huh? Sorry, I was spacing out. What were you saying? Never mind. Are you alright? You've been staring at that page for the past ten minutes without flipping it. Yeah, I'm fine. Just trying to distract myself from my own boredom. I don't even know why you're bothering to try to study now. We only have a good few minutes until the bell rings. It's not like it's going to do you any good. This is less for the sake of not studying and more so I won't feel so guilty over barely having studied. Oh, is that so? Must be nice being so smart that you don't have to study. Someone's a little bitter. What? Me? No. What about you? Did you study at all, June? That's funny you'd ask. Well, first we'd have to understand what it means to study. You didn't study at all either, did you? I studied a little bit. You really have no right to be complaining to me. What were you doing with your time that you didn't even study? Well, I spent a lot of time preparing for the festival, and then I spent the rest of my time practicing the piano. Just be careful you don't end up flunking out of third year again. I'm not going to flunk. It's okay. I'm sure you'll, you'll both do well. Everyone's just trying to distract themselves before tests start. Won't do us any good to obsess about it now. Yeah, that's a good point. It's easy for him to say, though. He did among the top 30 students of third year. Really? The mouse smiles awkwardly, scratching his cheek. I suppose that's true. In that case, shouldn't you be in the same class as Shuichi-san? Yeah, I did make it into that class, but I turned it down. Why? Without me around to keep an eye on him, I don't know if Jim would be able to graduate. Don't tell him I said that, though. I sit right next to you. I heard that. Oh, hey, Jim. Beautiful weather we're having today, right? Don't try to change the subject. Even despite the stress and exhaustion of constant studying, Jin remains as short-tempered as always. Is it really okay for these two to be bickering right before the test? Jin has been tutoring J Jun and Jin has been tutoring Jin since I've known the two. He's the main reason the guy even got into this school in the first place. That's not really what I asked. Well, I don't really have an answer for what you asked. These two are some of the weirdest people I know. It's probably because they're twins. Twins are just weird. Man, I'm really not looking forward to the tests. You really should have studied more. 
I don't want to hear that from you of all people. Hey, I might not study a lot, but I still get good grades. So everyone says. I still remember the results of the mock tests. Hmm. I'll probably both do a little better than we did in them. How so? They usually make the mock tests a little harder than the real midterms so scare, to, to scare students into studying more. What? Why didn't anyone tell me that? Probably because you would have studied even less if you knew. The twins stopped bickering just so Jen can cut into the conversation at the best possible timing. That's not true. We can all plainly tell from the look on your face that it is true. It's not all bad. At least that means you'll have a better chance now. I don't know whether that makes me happy or sad to hear. Don't worry. Tests are easy. You just gotta know a special little trick. A trick? You're not going to teach him how to cheat. What? But it's super useful. Oh, cheating? Never mind. Suit yourself. Good luck doing good luck doing senior year again. I'm not going to fail. Poor June. Tests haven't even started and his brain is already shutting down. A few hours later. Finally the bell finally the final bell rings. Time is up. Everyone put down their pens and hand their tests in. Hopefully we won't have a disaster on our hands. Shima Sensei smirks when, when he says so, and a few students groan under their breaths. Alright guys and gals, I'm going to go ahead and pause it right here. Thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, that notification bell. Leave a super thanks. Your tip if you can, it always helps. Until the next video, I love you all. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye!